Python boots are known for kicking ass and taking names. And today we have a pair of Python boots with a medium round toe from Los Altos. Plus, this is another giveaway video, so you have a chance to walk away with your own pair. Let's get into it. I'm just here to connect ya, and then I'll be on my way. Hey everybody, my name is Jeremiah Craig, and I am so excited for today's Los Altos Python video. And I want to thank YeehawCowboy.com for making it possible. You can find dozens of great brands at YeehawCowboy.com like Los Altos, Lou Casey, Tin Hall, Corral. So many brands, guys. And you can get them for 10% off when you use my code at checkout. Now, my promo code changes frequently, so head on over to JeremiahCraig.com slash promo codes to find the most recent code to save 10% at yeehawcowboy.com. Huge thanks to yeehawcowboy.com for supporting the channel and making this giveaway possible. Now, let's dive into the details about this Los Altos Python boot and get straight into the ruck yeah. This Los Altos features Python snake skin on the foot and the counter. It also features a beautiful medium round toe, also known as the R toe. I actually pulled my Facebook boot group and they said they wanted to see the R toe more than any other toe shape. So shout out to the Facebook boot group for choosing the medium round toe. It's a classic look. The boots come in at 13 inches tall with a cowhide black leather shaft. It also has a seven row stitch pattern, which is done by automated machine in their factories at Leon, Mexico. It also features a one and a half inch stacked leather heel and a leather outsole. It has a Goodyear welt, so you can get these resold when they need to be. And it also features lemonwood pegs and brass nails here alongside the shank. Now this Goodyear well isn't like the traditional cowboy boot build, even though there's a lot about this that is traditional. It's not a channeled well. Instead, it is a cloth rib with some cork in here, and it still is resolable. And actually, there's a lot of boots out there that are built like this now, including Tacovas and all of the other brands that look like them. This is a very comparable quality, and it looks great on the inside we have leather lined all the way through and it's that hung lining so you don't get that seam on the inside it's a super soft cowhide it's leather lined around the foot too and for an insole we have what i like to call a soft leather insole that's non-removable really what it is is foam and then that's topped with leather so you do have some cushion in here but also the luxurious feeling of leather on top of it. Like I said, these boots are made in Leon, Mexico, and they're coming in at $340 on yeehawcowboy.com. But remember, you can save 10% when you use my promo code, and you can find the most recent one at jeremiahcraig.com slash promo codes. Now it's time to try this boot on to see how it looks and feels. All right, everybody, I have on the Los Altos Python boots right now, and they feel really nice the leather lining on the inside is soft supple and it does squeak a little bit though i don't know if you can hear it so we'll have to see how soon that goes away during the break-in process or if i need to wear some different kinds of socks in order for that to go away but it is kind of obnoxious right now <laughs> I'm just noticing that, so we'll see what happens there. They look great though, especially with these jeans. These are Wrangler Retro Slim Straight Jeans, and I didn't think anything of it when I put them on with these boots, but damn, does this go well together or what? You gotta love the Wrangler Retro Slim Fit Jean. Here's the POV, friends. That medium round toe looks spectacular. It's one of my favorite toe shapes next to the J toe. And these boots can get a little bright depending on what light they're under. But you want that kind of attention if you're wearing Python boots like this. 
All right, now it's time to get out in the world to kick ass and take names and see how these Los Altos Python boots hold up through it all. If you wanna know more about the giveaway, you'll have to wait until the end, cause right now, it's the extended test. It's time to scuff up these soles and visit Jeff Konich of Family Martial Arts Center to test out the Los Altos Python boots in a way that would make Chuck Norris proud. Hi, I'm Jeff Konich, the owner of Family Martial Arts Center in Hudson, Massachusetts. Uh, also the founder of New England Fitness and Wellness. I've been training for 25 years in the martial arts. We provide self-defense in martial arts training as well as yoga training, one-on-one, -on -one, small groups, in person, and online. No matter where you are in the country, you can train with us. Uh, simply by going to our website, myblackbeltleadership.com or you can go to karateforfree.com. All right guys, Jeff has a thought process behind how to choose footwear for practical everyday use and also for the martial arts. So what we're gonna do is go through some of the thought process and some of the moves inside and then we're gonna go outside where I'm gonna try the moves with the boots on and we'll see if they pass or fail. I got a feeling right off the bat here that they're gonna fail. <laughs> First up were the stances. Generally speaking, being able to settle into stances uh, and be grounded without rolling my ankle, uh, without slipping on different terrains, uh, sometimes you can't help that, but the recovery process is, is what's really important for me. Now sometimes my stance might be used as a defensive tactic as well. One method we have is canceling our opponent's height zone by buckling the leg like so. If my shoe does not allow me to be stable with that movement, that's the problem for me because simple little movements like that are very important. So we practice the stances inside first without the dummy and then with the dummy. Now to test the stances out with the boots on. They had a bit more grip than I expected, but we were also on brick, which probably helped a lot. Next up were kicks. After looking at stances and being grounded, now I look at, well, what type of foot maneuvers and kicks can I do with my feet. Uh, typically, when we do our front kick, we use the ball of the foot and we pull our toes back. So am I gonna be able to do that with whatever piece of footwear I'm wearing? I wanna be able to drive the ball of my foot into that target. Now some boots might allow for me to use the toe, but I wanna make sure if that's happening when I'm wearing them, that it's not gonna injure me over time because my foot is kicking like this instead of like this. Am I able to do that front kick without my boot falling off uh, and without hurting myself? Again, it was a quick practice before trying kicks out with the boots, and I found that I was able to get the ball of my foot up more than I expected. Finally, it came down to the maneuvers. Personally, for me, it's just the basics. So I can just do the basic maneuvers to stop somebody from hitting me without falling down. You know, because they say that 80% of confrontations end up on the ground. 100% of those confrontations start standing up. That's something that's really important to me to understand. If I'm gonna get taken down, that's a different story, and we deal with that in a different way. But the idea here is preventative measures. What can we do to stop ourselves from being the reason why we get taken to the ground, such as bad footwear. So we practiced a few more maneuvers, but then I met up with Jeff again a few days later when he held a community event in the park. It had an obstacle course set up by Train with Pete Personal Training. It had a tire run, a bear crawl, jumping jacks, farmer's carry, squats, and it finished off with cornhole. Let's see how these boots maneuver.
Then there was an extra level that Jeff tacked on at the end called The Gauntlet, which was actually just an excuse to hit a YouTuber. <laughs> With the beating over, it's time to play some Can Jam. Brenna and I did well the first game and I threw an automatic win shot. Then Tim the chiropractor came back and did the same in his first throw the next game. After that, Brenna and I did okay in the tiebreaker game, but Tim got us again with that same shot. What a day. I'd say the Los Altos boots performed well and looked good through it all. So did they pass the test? Yes and no. I feel like I did well on them, but I know that on other surfaces, under other conditions that this heel would definitely not be as sturdy and the leather outsole can be more slippy than a shorter heel and a rubber outsole on different kinds of boots or shoes. So probably not the most practical for Jeff's reasons, but they still performed really well. Huge thanks to Jeff Konich for helping me out with the extended test. Be sure to check out his online martial arts training at karateforfree.com. He does some great work and is a really positive presence in the community. Such a good dude. Overall, I think Los Altos is a good mid-level brand that makes a beautiful cowboy boot for the price, but with that price comes some corners cut in production that become apparent when we take a closer look at the boot. This is the second snakeskin boot that I reviewed this year and moderator and viewer of the channel, Carol Burgess, was wondering how these compared to the others, which were a pair of blackjack rattlesnake boots. Now making that comparison isn't really fair because blackjack is on such a different level that has such a different market, but I was thinking to myself that it might be a good way to show the corners cut that Los Altos makes and why sometimes that's okay. Here's that blackjack rattlesnake boot, and the first thing that you can notice in the difference between these two is in the finishing and how Los Altos chose to finish this boot in the factory. You can see where the snakeskin meets the top here. They've stained the leather, which is actually partly the leather lining on the inside, and they do that so that you don't see the color. It could be gray or white, but it's a very messy process and you can see where they've run over the edge in some areas and just completely missed it altogether. So it's messy and it cheapens the look a little bit. On the blackjack, they use a process called skiving, which means they shave the leather down at its edges so it's really, really thin. And when they sew it to the top, you can barely even see it at all. That process though is really expensive, time consuming, and it takes a lot of skill. Not really the best suited for a factory boot like Los Altos, but that's part of the cost savings that you're gonna get over here. As I mentioned earlier on in the video, Los Altos also uses a stiff fabric rib here to sew the outsole to, and inside they also use a cork filler, which is another way that they can save costs. It's not inherently bad to build a boot like that. In fact, a lot of modern boot companies are doing that, including Tacovas. Blackjack, on the other hand, uses a channeled welt system. So that means on the inside of this boot, in the insole, they carve a channel and then sew the outsole into that channel. So basically it's leather on leather. Another really time consuming process that doesn't make sense for a factory boot like Los Altos that increases the price significantly, but it is by far a better build. Another thing that I noticed was since the Los Altos boot has a foam footbed that's topped with leather, it doesn't breathe as well as a traditionally made boot, which makes this one just a little bit more warm to wear all day long. But again, that hard leather insole is a traditionally made process that can increase the price of a boot. That's why I think the Los Altos Python boot is great for the price. A blackjack boot with all of its traditional features, the skiving, the channeled welt, the hard leather insole, all of those things make this boot worth $800. A snakeskin blackjack boot will run you around $800. On the other hand, this boot with its factory process will run you around $300, especially when you use my promo code with Yeehaw Cowboy. So when it comes down to it, I'm cool with this boot having a soft leather insole with the foam because it still feels great. 
I'm fine with it having a rib construction here with the Goodyear well and a cork filler because it's still resolable. Plus their sizing and build is comparable to many other modern brands in the same price range like Dan Post and Tacovas, and I actually feel that this is more comfortable than those two brands specifically. The leather was a little bit loud and squeaky on the inside, but that stopped as the boot broke in. And also the edge here does bother me a little bit how messy it looks and how it cheapens the boot look a little bit. But again, that's only noticeable if you look at it up close. The Python looks spectacular. And that's why I feel like this is a great boot for the price. But as always, let me know what you think down in the comments. Now let's talk about how you have a chance to win a pair in your own size if you're watching this video within the first couple of weeks of it being posted. You gotta do three things to enter this giveaway. Number one, like this video. Number two, subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet. And number three, Fill out the form at the link in the description with your email and some other information so that I can contact you if you win. You must have an address in the United States in order to win, but if you're not in the US, don't worry. Head on over to my Facebook boot group and make a friend who can ship those boots to you if you happen to win. I'll announce the winner on a Boots and Ballads live stream on Friday, October 1st at 8 p.m. Eastern, right here on YouTube. I play music, talk boots, and so much more. You won't want to miss it. Thanks for watching today. Huge thanks to Yeehaw Cowboy for making this possible. Good luck in the giveaway, and I will see you October 1st. Peace. Los Santos is a good boot for the price. It looks great and it feels so nice. It gets down and kicks ass. It saves cash and still can last. Yeah. Thanks so much for watching today. Why don't you check out this video up here when I was at the Los Altos factory in Leo, Mexico. Or I got a video down here about a Boots and Balance live stream. So you know what to expect on October 1st. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time.